size from the five foot tall emperor penguin right down to the tiny little blue or fairy penguin which comes in at about one foot tall. Now here at Penguin Beach we've got four species. We've got the Humboldt penguin. They can be found on the Pacific coast of South America in countries like Chile, Argentina and Peru. We've got the African penguin and they can be found on hot sunny sandy cactus laden beaches in South Africa and Namibia. And they'll be probably joined by some seagulls and some herons again. They've already learned the times of our penguin feeds. Any talks with fish, the herons and the seagulls will be around. So we've got our South African penguins or our black-footed penguins. We've then also got two species that can come from the islands around the outside of the South Pole. That's the macaroni penguin. And we do have our very own favourite. You may remember him from our previous pool. That's Ricky. He's a rock hopper. And right on cue, he's up here on the rocks just behind Adrian. So Adrian, could you point out the four different species for us and just tell us how you can tell the difference between them? Okay, I'm feeding down here at the moment. I've got a little group of African penguins, which are these ones here. They're our babies that we hand reared last year. I've also got some scruffy penguins. These scruffy ones are Humboldt penguins. Um, they make up the bulk of the, the birds within the exhibit. And obviously, as mentioned before, I've actually got Ricky, who's up here, who's our star, and he's just been joined for the first time by one of the macaroni penguins. Just so this is the first time one of the macaronis has jumped up and taken some fish. Fantastic, great stuff. Okay guys, now we are feeding uh, our uh, penguins for you. So after three, I'd like you guys to shout out what do you think a penguin's favourite food is. Ready? One, two, three. Fish! That's right, it's fruit. No, it's not, of course. It's fish. Okay. Now they like all sorts of fish out in the wild, but they particularly like small crustaceans, like shrimp and krill. Hey, so can you just tell us the kinds of fish that we're feeding them here and why you're feeding them in the way that you are? Okay, I'm feeding Caitlin today, so it's this little long silvery fish. That one there. Just and I'm feeding it. in two different ways. You see me throw the fish into the water. This is to encourage the natural behaviour of the penguins porpoising backwards and forwards and catching fish in the, um, in the sea. And I'm also feeding some of our little babies down on land just making sure that they're getting a little bit of extra top up of fish per day. Fantastic stuff. Okay, now we've met our uh, penguins, and a heron's just come to join me here as well. Now we've met them, let's uh, find out a little bit more, more about how they cope for life in the water. Now before that, they're out on the land, they're actually quite clumsy. They waddle around, so they can make an easy target for a predator, especially when you consider as well they're short-sighted and can't see very well out on the land. That's because when they dive in the water, the water acts as a lens around their eyes, enabling them ju to judge distances to hunt and also to avoid predators. But when they're in the water, you can see that they fly underwater there. You can see a bird just coming in from the back here. Looks like they're flying, and of course, underwater. So they're very streamlined to enable them to do that. They've got solid bones that help to keep them under the water. Most birds, like our friends just over here now, most flighted birds have got hollow bones. And that, of course, makes them lighter to fly. Well, if a penguin had hollow bones, that means they just float on the surface of the water and wouldn't be able to dive down to catch their food. So by having, having solid bones, they get a lot of weight behind each stroke through the water, swim up to 25 kilometers an hour, but also it gives them weight to dive down. Now, they've also got a very special form of camouflage called counter shading. And that means they've got a black back and a white belly. The white belly is nothing to do with snow. In actual fact, if they're swimming on top of the water and there's a predator beneath them looking up, hopefully for that penguin, that white belly will look like the light, bright surface of the water. Equally, if they're diving down amongst the rocky shallows, that black back will look a little bit like a black pebble or the depths of the ocean in the water. Now, obviously, Adrian and Evelyn are throwing some fish in. But fish is a very slippery food item to eat. And penguins don't have any teeth to help them grip onto that slippery food. So instead, penguins have got a very, very spiky tongue. You wouldn't want to get a kiss off a penguin. What they do is use the spikes on their tongue to latch them between the different scales on the fish, and turn it round the right way. The right way for a penguin to eat a fish is head first. Because if you've ever stroked a fish, maybe not many of you have, from head to tail, nice and smooth, tail to head, rough like sandpaper. So if these guys were to eat a... Uh, a fish tail first, they do themselves some damage. Now these guys have also got waterproof feathers. So when they come out of the water, they're a bit drier and they can stay warm. 
Now they achieve that waterproof coating by having a special gland above their tail called a preening gland. And in there is lots of lovely juicy oil and they'll get their beak down onto that, cover it with oil and then preen or groom their feathers, making that top layer of feathers nice and waterproof. Okay guys, so sadly, penguins out in the wild are endangered at the moment. 12 out of the 18 species are under some sort of threat from either overfishing, disease, the main threat may be climate change. Now as the earth is getting warmer, that means the South Pole is getting warmer and is uh, making a better home or a better environment for some diseases. Some diseases like avian malaria. That's just started to come into some populations of penguins like rock hoppers on the Falkland Islands. So we're starting to see diseases that you wouldn't have normally seen down there in the past. Thankfully though, here at ZSL, we have a building across the road called the Institute of Zoology. And in there, there's lots and lots of scientists, but there is a specialist scientist called a penguinologist. What our penguinologist does is travels down there and does lots of research, finding out where penguins are feeding and where they're moving in response to climate change. And when we know more from this data over the next few years, we're going to be able to form better conservation plans to make sure these guys survive for many generations to come. Okay then folks, well the rain's just about held off for the talk. I'm going to pass you back to Adrian for just one final word. Okay guys, um, basically I just want to say for, on behalf of all the keepers and everybody that's been involved in this project, as you're all members of the zoo and as you all visit the zoo and you support the zoo kind of yearly, year on, year out, i just really like to say thank you to you all for your support you know, for coming to these events and to making sort of exhibits like this happen. If it wasn't for you guys coming, putting money into the zoo and visiting us and supporting us, we wouldn't be able to have such a fantastic exhibit of this. So, honestly and truly, thank you all very much for, for supporting us. And I know you all do a lot anyway, but as you leave, there are a few buckets up at the end there. And if you've got any loose change in the pockets, then obviously I'm, I'm on holiday soon, so I need a little bit of spending money. But almost seriously, what we will do... There's money we go back into the zoo, but it's really appreciated all the, the time, the money and the effort that you guys put into visiting us. So thank you very much on behalf of all the keepers. So thanks very much for listening. Give yourselves a nice big round of applause. Thanks very much.